What's happening, YouTube? So yeah, we're getting an early start in on the Duramax. It's like 6 a.m. right now, and I'm just pumped, ready to get this thing going. We gotta get the injectors pulled. So that's what today's video is gonna be about. We're gonna start taking the top stuff off the motor, and we're gonna be pulling the injectors out and talking about what we're gonna be doing with our injectors here on the Duramax build. Hey guys, so I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you, but I've never done this before. Contrary to belief, but you know what? I am a mechanic and I have a lot of tools, so I just have a firm belief that you take enough bolts apart, something's going to fall off. So we're just going to uh, take enough bolts off until I get what I want off of this. Specifically today, we're going to be talking injectors. Injectors are the high pressure fuel system on a diesel engine that is going to make everything go boom. Diesels don't run on spark. They just run off of high heat and combustion inside the engine. So uh, you have to have these really fancy injectors that put out pressures of up to like 20 up to like 30,000 PSI, which is kind of an insane amount knowing how standard gasoline injectors only put out, you know, roughly, we'll say 10, 15, 20 PSI, somewhere around there. So this stuff is quite a bit bigger. And of course, when you go bigger, you get more expensive. So more expensive is on along the lines of diesel injectors. You're talking uh, rebuilds on them are anywhere from two to three hundred dollars per injector usually that's the cost of the nozzle the shipping the um, actual uh, rebuild on it testing and getting it back to you which is on the cheap side if you want to buy a whole new set of injectors um, if you're going to trade yours back in you're looking at you know three four grand uh, at least here on these lbz motors and then if you're looking at just buying a new set outright like big boy set then you're looking at like five grand, which is crazy. But we decided to go with a company called Bitterroot Diesel. I'll leave the description down below in the comments. Uh, they're gonna be doing a full rebuild for us. So we'll get into what they're gonna do for us here in a second. Let's get to uh, taking some more stuff apart. So I've been kind of just pulling harnesses off of here and there, but the first thing major that we're gonna have to take off, and this will translate over to if you guys don't have the cab up off, you guys are just gonna be doing this through the wheel well and some from up top. We're gonna have to get this uh, fuel bowl and filter assembly off. Uh, you're gonna take the two clamps off the hoses, and we're actually just gonna take everything right off the brackets. So there's like four 13 millimeters, gonna take that off the whole valve cover. Here on the driver's side, after we've got our uh, fuel filter assembly taken off, we're gonna be starting to take our harness. You're gonna take it off the fuel rail pressure sensor. You're gonna take the brackets off that are hanging all over the valve covers and everything. Um, taking off your uh, glow plugs down here, and then one by one, you're gonna be taking off your fuel injector connectors. We're also gonna get our oil um, dipstick tube out of the way and then a couple more little harness bits before we can move on it's just a lot of little things try your best not to break any of these clips because rerouting this harness is pretty important you'll want to get it back in the right place and they do a pretty good job at doing that just if you have to take video take some pictures so you know exactly what you're doing just kind of getting the harness pulled back here. Got our fuel lines off. Uh, one thing that I do notice about these Duramaxes and what I really like working on them about is the fact that their harnesses are all bolted into place. They don't use a whole lot of those freaking rip clips, those plastic clips, the Christmas trees that go into places that end up just slicing up your hands left and right. They're, it's a, you know, a pain in the butt. Uh, no, these actually bolt in a lot of places, so it makes it nice for rerouting your harness 
and getting it into the correct places when it comes time to going back together instead of just having it hanging out everywhere. Now you can see we've got our harness all out of the way, folded over to the other side. We're going to need to take off these uh, small little clips here. Pretty easy. They're just going to kind of pry towards the front of the engine. For These are for the return lines. Take the little clips off and then they just pull up out. I always like to put the clips back just so I kind of know where they're at. Like that. Get all those off and then we're going to need to take off our high pressure injector lines. Uh, these are going to be a 17 millimeter. Twist those off, take all the lines off, set them aside. We're actually going to be replacing these lines so really don't need to keep them other than to just kind of have a placeholder of which lines went where. So we'll start to get those off now. Next thing we're going to have to do is get our hold downs off, 12 millimeters, four of them right along here. And one of the things you might have to do is you might have to get a pry bar underneath these uh, hold downs underneath this uh, beveled area right here to give it a pry to try to get these injectors free. Uh, one thing I'm super lucky about is my injectors just kind of fall out. So that's super nice for me. Not so great for extra video content of me messing up, but it works. We'll get all these out. Yep, this one was a little stuck here, so just get in under there and pry up with the tool underneath the hold down to be able to get that one out. See, we had a bunch of crud around that O-ring. O-ring's torn. Boy, these look a lot dirtier than I thought they were going to be. Well, good thing we're taking care of these guys. Kind of nasty. Now the passenger side's not going to be a whole lot different, it's just got more shit in the way. Now if you're doing this through the fender well, you've got your steering, power steering lines, your brake lines, these extra fuel hoses and lines, so you just got a couple of things to work around. It's not that it's impossible, it's super simple still, just kind of got to finagle around with things. Getting the brackets off for your main connectors, getting those off, get that bracket off, uh, get your harness take that off you're able to access all your glow plugs all your injector harnesses here the only thing that's kind of a pain is looks like these fuel lines there's some hold downs right here so we can kind of get those pulled back out of the way and uh, then it looks like we'll have plenty of room to get access to our injectors so at this point we've got our return lines all off i took off the glow plug module just to get a little bit of extra wrench room you know at this point you guys could use um, your standard six or 17 wrench to get into the this part of the injector lines and then the 19s they're a little bit harder to get to uh, you could either use a crow's foot here or you could start taking some of these extra brackets off it's a little bit tight i think what i'm going to do i'm going to get the pcv off because you know we're going to be rerouting all that anyways get the pcv off and then i think we'll be able to get our lines free i might i'm still going to take the coolant uh, upper hose off the tube right there that goes into the thermostat housing just because we're going to have that off for later anyways just to be able to get that front injector line out too now we've got all of the lines off they, they were able to come out just fine without taking that upper hose off just wanted to show you guys that one now we're going to get our hold downs off the 12 millimeters and get the injectors pulled we'll see hopefully these ones come out just as easy as the other side Now let's just do a little bit of a quick inspection of how our tips and everything look. Uh, these will be the front of the motor right here. Let's see if we can get it to focus. 
these are a lot rougher than I thought they were going to be, guys. They're they're pretty darn rough. Ten millimeter, found it. Yeah, these ones are are, are kind of rough, guys. So I'd say you know there's a lot of stuff that have fallen down in the o-rings are pretty nasty so i'm really glad that we're going to be you know kind of getting these out taken care of the injector balances on these were pretty decent i had a uh, seven was a little bit high at like i think two and a half or three right around there so i'm glad we're going to get these all taken care of and uh, sent off so i don't have to worry about them so now we're gonna get these things all packaged up and sent off over to Montana. Like I said, the guys who are gonna be doing it over at Bitterroot Diesel, they are the pros when it comes to these things. I've done quite a bit of research on them and these guys are good at what they do. What they're actually gonna do, no, we're not taking these things stock and just doing a quick rebuild. No, we're doing 60 overs. They're gonna do a full rebuild on them, new seals, new jets, uh, they're going to check the solenoid pressures and everything. They're going to actually do a, they have flow bench tests and they're going to be able to put 24,000 PSI full, fully through it. Plus they're not only going to do that, they're going to run it through what they would call an idle test where if you just had those things sitting there at idle to make sure they're not putting out too much from what they need to be. Now, if you guys are thinking about doing this yourself, it is a possibility, and I thought about doing that. An injector rebuild just put new nozzles in it because I had pretty decent um, balance rates for these things, but I decided, you know, plus these guys did reach out to me, or I talked to them, and they were able to say, hey, yeah, let's do this the right way. Now, when you're talking injector nozzles, they, they have told me that all injector nozzles are not created equal. The big ones in the market that you need to look for are going to be SNS and Exergy. Those two are pretty much the top of the line ones. They are going to be the best of the market that they have right now. They do make you know cheaper ones, and there are um, some cost-effective ones for you guys to be able to do. But you also have to think that you're doing this yourself. You're saving some money. Hopefully, your injectors are okay. They're not going to be balance tested. They're not going to be tuned in like these guys are going to be doing for these. So just kind of keep that one in mind. Maybe give these guys a call. Maybe it's going to be a little bit more cost effective to be able to help you guys out in actually getting these things done the right way at a shop. So we're going to get these things packaged up, shipped out. Hopefully we get them back here in time for when I get the rest of the motor and stuff done. Next on the video line, we're going to be taking the stuff off the intake. We're going to be pulling the turbo, pulling the heads. And that's right, guys, we're going to be studding it. ARP head studs uh, to be able to run what we want on this thing. The end goal on the LBZ here is going to be between 700 and 750 horse right around there. We're going to be getting it dyno tuned after it's all done and get this thing all dialed in right. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool, awesome videos like this one. I appreciate you guys tuning in, guys. And as always, you guys stay awesome.